Hello and welcome to a special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Kevin Ochsner. Thanks for joining us. For cattlemen and women, job one is protecting the health of their animals. Unfortunately, one of the costly threats to the health and performance of cattle is unseen and often undetected. Internal parasites can rob an animal of its health and deliver a hard hit to the bottom line for cattle producers. And once parasites do their damage, many animals never recover enough to reach their full genetic potential. So today, we're going to focus our time on this critical animal health issue, and we'll talk about some of the tactics and weapons producers can use in the fight against parasites. Joining me now is a panel of experts from Marielle. With us, we have Dr. Mark Campbell with Large Animal Veterinary Services for Marielle in Oklahoma. Dr. Campbell, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, Kevin. Before I talk about myself, I'd like to say hi to my, my family back in Pawnee, Oklahoma. First of all, my beautiful wife, Lacey. She's got her hands full with my, my three <laughs> kids. Uh, my big boy, Colt, and my twin little girls, Della Ruth and Frances Faye Campbell. You'll have to bring them the next time. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. They'd have this place torn <laughs> up. But, but, but uh, grew up in Alva, Oklahoma, up in northwest Oklahoma. Um, Went to vet school and graduated from 2001 from Oklahoma State. Mm -hmm. Go Pokes. Uh, <laughs> then uh, worked in Hennessy a year okay. and bought a clinic in, in Pawnee, Oklahoma, mm -hmm. Pawnee Vet Hospital. And um, started with Mariel 2011, so I've been with them about four years. Uh, I've been running cattle for almost 20 years, well, over 20 years. Me and the bank have been partners on cattle for oh, about 20 years. So, and now I'm here on TV with you good people. I think I've done pretty well from a boy from Oklahoma. <laughs> Absolutely. We're glad to have you. <laughs> and also with Marielle and the Large Animal Vet Services is Tony Moravec. Uh, you hail from Nebraska, is that right? Yeah, that's right, Kevin. Go Big Red. Uh, <laughs> born and raised in a beef and grain operation in east central Nebraska. I went to the University of Nebraska for my undergraduate degree and then to K-State to vet school. Uh, was in a mixed animal practice in Illinois and then Nebraska in the last Coming up on nine years, I've been with Mariel. Mm -hmm. uh, I've lived everywhere between Tennessee and Oregon. Found myself back in Nebraska now, yeah. um, just half hour away from the home operation with my wife, Erica, and she's at home as well with our kids, <laughs> uh, Wyatt, Macy, Quinn, Levi, and Nate. Wow. She's got her hands really full. <laughs> I so, say. Uh, but it's great to be here. Thanks for the opportunity. You bet. We're glad to have you. And in addition to the Marielle team, of course, we have a uh, cow-calf operator from South Dakota, Brent Mason from Mason Knox Ranch. Brent, Thank introduce you, yourself. Thank you, Kevin. Um, our ranch was homesteaded in 1911. Currently, my wife Carmen and I and my sister and her husband, Bob and Darla Knox, own and operate a cow-calf operation there as well as a beef replacement heifer operation and a grain farming operation in East Central South Dakota. Outstanding. Well, we're sure glad to have you all. And let's get started with a few basics as we get into the issue of internal parasites. Dr. Campbell, I want to start the discussion with you. Why is it important for producers to deworm cattle? Well, Kevin, it's one of the most important practices they can incorporate in their operation because basically it makes all their other uh, endeavors look better. They're makes their grass more efficient, their feeding more efficient, their mineral program more efficient, their, their vaccines work better. And basically it's one of the most profitable management decisions they can do. It, it's not a should do or a might do. As far as I'm concerned, it's a must do. You mentioned economics. Um, uh, Tony, I'd be interested, uh, what is the overall economic impact in your estimate well, of internal parasites? It, it's pretty significant, Kevin. I mean, it's probably one of the biggest things you can you can do to add to your bottom line. Uh, Iowa State recently did a study looking at that economic impact and they found that upwards of $201 per head of additional income that you could derive from deworming and a lot of that comes from in increased and improved reproductive efficiency. Um, and that's significant. That's not a lot of a lot of direct savings or costs that, that you can correlate and pin out and pencil mm -hmm. out but it really does add to the bottom line significantly. Mm -hmm. so, so I've always heard people say that there are some regional differences, however, and, and, and what would you say about that? Well, the parasite threat is consistent no matter where you live. Um, in the southeast, in the high mountain area, you're going to have a consistent threat of parasites. The impact's going to be a little bit different, though. If you're fortunate and have a lot of, of feed, an abundance of feed, you can feed your way through a worm problem. Um, 
there's still going to have some erosion and, and impact on the bottom line. But if you have a feed problem, you can't worm your way out of that. Uh, the worms will have their way with you. So <laughs> if you're in, uh, say, the southeast where there's abundance of feed and cattle are belly deep in grass, they're still going to have parasites and have an impact. But say if you're in the high mountain country of eastern Montana, mm -hmm. parasites are not as big of an issue, but feed's a big issue. And if you're in a drought situation, it's a real issue, even if you have a couple parasites. So Dr. Campbell, you said this is not an optional practice in your opinion, but, but do you think that there are producers who, who don't recognize this need or maybe not as concerned as, as you'd like them to be about this? Some of them are, but probably the majority of them aren't as concerned as they should be because they look out their pasture, you know, like Tony was talking about, the cows are belly deep in grass, they look good. Cows look good, the calves look good. And, but they can't see the subclinical effects of parasites. It, it's, it's an unseen situation where they're just not at, at the pro productivity of those cattle all the time. So I know timing is a critical issue. And, and uh, what would you tell our viewers about uh, what we need to understand in terms of overall life cycle of these parasites? That is something they need to understand because um, cows are picking up parasites when they're grazing. If they're out grazing, they're picking up parasites. When you're drinking coffee in the morning, they're picking up parasites. When you're cutting hay, they're picking up parasites. It, it's happening the whole time they're grazing. As long as that, that ground temperature is above 50 degrees, they're picking up parasites. Brent, I would ask you from a cow-calf perspective, I mean, what effects do parasites have out in the pasture? Well, Kevin, uh, the parasites uh, will overload a pasture. With, uh, with that said, as the cows graze, they get overloaded and uh, loaded with parasites, and that's very detrimental to their weight gains and their reproductive uh, cycles. It, it, it's a very uh, detrimental thing. And it's, it's going to vary where you're at geographically as the grass yeah. comes in, especially as we come into the springtime. Yeah. Where Brent's at in South Dakota, he doesn't have a lot of grass on the <laughs> ground right yet, but there's parts of South Texas where they do. And sure. so we do have a nice tool online called the Digital Dewormer. Mm. If they were to go to the longrangelook.com, they can click and see where exactly they're at geographically to figure out when the best time is to, to deworm these cattle and get the best bang for their buck. That's a great resources. And we're gonna continue with this discussion, but we have a video segment that provides some insight on how parasites are active in pastures. Let's have a look. To break this cycle of parasite infection and reinfection, it takes about 100 days of continuous parasite control. Thanks to the unique Theraphase technology, a single spring treatment with long range controls parasites for up to 100 to 150 days. When treated for that long, the herd functions like a filter for parasites. As cattle graze, they pick up infective larvae, which are then killed when exposed to long range. Those larvae never develop into adults, so the number of parasite eggs being shed back onto the pasture starts to drop. Over the course of 100 to 150 days, this effect can dramatically decrease levels of infective larvae on the pasture, and that can add up to real performance benefits for your herd.